Thank you, Liz, and thank you, Lisa, for, I'm so grateful to be here and see the moving work that everyone's doing. I'm just so moved, it's gonna be hard to stop, start talking now because I, I, I love those presentations. So I wanna tell you about my work in youth peace building, especially working with young people from communities in conflict around the world, uh, transforming their identities, really, and building shared power to work on these issues. And I've re I, I wanna, you know, Woody Guthrie once said, uh, I steal from everybody, you know, uh, not, just, not just a few people steal from me. I, I take from so many peoples. And I realized at this workshop that my life's work is like a collab. And I've been taking so many influences. I want to share some of those influences uh, with you so you get a sense of, of, what I, of what I do. Now, I had to go back to think about this journey I've had. I realized I've now been doing this work almost half my life. That was a sobering fact. Uh, but I wanted to get a picture because you see this picture here. I mean, it shows I'm committed doing peace work when I was young. But the more important is the haircut, which is a mullet that Lisa Petridis gave me <laughs> in the 80, early 80s. So and you see here that what the hair was like before 1980. Uh, and and the funny thing, though, looking for this picture, I found this old my senior thesis from college, and it's it titled "Empowering Education." Recreating Democracy for Peace. It's like I could have written it today. There's really a line with what I'm doing now and, and what my work was then. But then was 1980, and what was about to happen? Somebody was about to be elected president who many of us said, if he's elected, we're going to move to Canada. So <laughs> some things haven't changed, maybe. Um, and then John Lennon got killed, and I, uh, I had to go from my first job in adolescent residential treatment as a recreation director and say, I got to work at deeper levels, not just patch people up. So what do we do then? So, so it's the systematic approach, get in a VW bus and drive somewhere to start a rock and roll band, obviously. Uh, so I tried that. In case the band didn't work out, I got a doctorate degree. <laughs> and uh, it didn't. When you hear me sing a little, you'll see why I got it. You know why the band didn't work out. But uh, but what I do now is I direct programs for peace building and conflict transformation. We did. I did wind up in the East Coast. The van broke down. I'm still there. And these youth empowerment programs at the School for International Training. So the roots of those peace building programs come from here. I, I was in Berkeley in San Francisco when I finished school. There was a challenge program called Project Reach, where we brought uh, Asian, Latino, black, and white youth into ropes course activities, up into the mountains backpacking, to paint a mural at Haight Scott, which maybe many of you saw. It was there for decades. And to, to learn new games, which are cooperative games. They're not competitive. So things, things were changing about working with young people. You can see them in the middle doing those kind of games. So I stumbled around here and there. And finally, a few friends said, hey, you, you should apply for this job to teach peace and conflict studies at this place in Vermont. And I went and did get the job. And they wanted us to start a youth program called the Governor's Institute on International Affairs. And I was the youngest faculty. They said, you'd take the teenagers. None of the rest of us want to do it. So that really started my work with young people. And that year, we had Soviet students with Americans, Soviets from Leningrad. The second year, they were. Russians from St. Petersburg. So you guys can do your history work and figure out exactly what year that was. And now those programs were 50, 60 students now. There are over 1,000 students a year from actually 110 countries have been through the program. And you can see some of the big countries. We have a lot of students from Iraq right now and Mexico where there's a lot of violence. So the roots go deeper. I tried to think, well, how did, my, how did I get on working for peace? And it's back to when I was a little kid, I remembered one of my earliest memories, having counselors at a day camp sing, and sing together. I think some of you know the words of this. Gonna lay down my sword and shield, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Come on. Down by the riverside, gonna lay down my sword and shield, down by the riverside, and study war no more. So that was like a straight line in me that, with all the ups and downs of this, uh, I knew peace was essential. And here we're working on conflict. And these are Israelis and Palestinians outside Jerusalem. And you can see they're using an Augusta Boal type theater activity to literally play act a wall and how to bring it down. 
Now the head symbolized the intellectual challenge that's involved in addressing conflict, and that's a core piece of youth empowerment. Another core piece is emotional nurturance. You see the heart there. And I have to do a shout out here to John Vasconcelos. How many people heard of John Vasconcelos? He was the senator from San Jose, a representative. I worked for him when I was 18 years old. And he was started the self-esteem movement. He was known as the touchy-feely legislator. But he, he said the, per, the personal is political. And you can see from these young people that they have literally changed their identity from being enemies, being raised to be enemies, to being friends and understanding what it means to be an active peace builder. And the third piece of this is shared power. And what does that mean, sharing power with teenagers? Well, the hands along with the head and heart. I learned from group dynamics that I studied out here in the Bay Area, the importance of inclusion. We have to feel connected to those groups that we want to work in. Nobody's excluded. People aren't dominating in groups. And the importance of understanding each other across cultures when we're doing this work. Now, Paulo Freire, again, I was blessed to be able to drive him around to speak to teenagers to encourage them to go to college my, for minority communities in Massachusetts. And he's the one who taught us, you have to understand people's lives when he was teaching literacy in Brazil to be able to get them to be active and do, do the work to change their lives. And in conflict, intercultural understanding is key. As far as action, we were lucky to have Bernie Sanders, you heard of him by now? He's our, he was our little congressman in Little Vermont, and he got in touch with us and said, we want you to do a program to teach, have te teenagers teach other teenagers about the problem of child labor. Now, these students created conferences. They went to Guatemala to help build a school, and they wrote legislation so Vermont cannot import apparel made in sweatshops. And they did it. I was just the van driver. The students did it all themselves. CLIA, Child Labor Education and Action. OK, now, I can't just talk about this, because all these approaches, you see how experiential and engaging they are. So I'm going to try to get you to do a 30-second experiential activity, because I usually don't talk this much. Now, what I want you to do is, with a person next to you, if, if it has to be three of you, that's fine. Take just 10 seconds and make a hand sculpture, a two hand, something beautiful. You can do it. Um, just, ten, just improvise it. Don't talk about it. Let me see a beautiful hand sculpture. Hold them up. Let's see. It's looking good. OK. OK, hold them up now. Everybody be quiet and hold them up there. Everybody be quiet for a second. OK. Now, what I want you to do is to your partner, just say one word about something you did about the process. How did you accomplish it? What did you feel? What did you do together? Uh, just say one word to each other. OK, let's hear. Shout out a few of those words. Respect. Started. Respond. OK, so this is, that's good. So this is a, a piece of. Uh, experiential learning where you had an experience, you reflected on what you did, and now I can add a little bit of theory. You weren't d debating each other, you weren't fighting, you weren't having a nice discussion comparing who had the better idea or even appreciating each other's idea. You were having some kind of a dialogue to create a new uh, reality. So that's uh, the, uh, the center of what we do. Now in these programs, the young people do these team building and trust building activities, the kinds of experiential activities that you can see that we do here. They're having fun. They're building trust. They're also doing collaborative problem solving. A core piece of the groups, uh, the programs, are these dialogue sessions. Young people start out with something easy. What is similar and different about our daily schedules? Then move deeper. How do we unpack stereotypes? What are multiple perspectives on conflict? How do we share then personal stories and challenges to build empathy for each other's lives and then create some common peaceful vision for the future? And I finally written a, a manual about this, and if anybody's interested about how we do it. And what's amazing is the students say, this is my favorite part of the program. You'd think they'd like the canoeing or the ropes course or something fun like that. And it's ironic, though, that I'm doing this, because when I did 
dialogue, my first dialogue groups for affinity groups to get arrested, and I would fall asleep. I just didn't get it, but <laughs> they like it. I'm glad. Uh, the last experiential approach I want to share is music, using music to empower, and I wrote a uh, climate change co-opera. So we do songs uh, to help us engage with the difficult emotions about responding to climate change. How do we move from fear and denial to hope and action? And this is built on the work of Joanna Macy, who she's still alive of all these people. She's amazing. And she teaches us not to be afraid of our sadness, but that love is the other side of that coin. Um, and so we can move from despair to empowerment. And of course, Pete Seeger. Now, how many people have heard of Pete Seeger? Teenagers? Anybody? I don't think so. He was our great folk singer. And he, his big idea was creating the Clearwater, which is a boat that sails up and down the Hudson River to uh, to clean up the river, which was a mess, but also bring people together. And they would sing. So now you got to repeat after me. Sailing up. Sailing up. Sailing down. Sailing down. All right, now here's the challenge. Let's see if you're awake. Now do the opposite. Up. 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 Down. 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 Again, up. Down. down. Up and down the river. The river may be dirty now, but it's getting cleaner every day. But well, the teenagers were good at that. I don't know. <laughs> And so there is a way to get, get teenagers to even enjoy singing together and, and hopefully not be too geeky about it. So uh, ultimately, um, I think you can see in these programs that the young people are fully human. We've had head, hands, and heart involved. I heard somebody say soul in this program, too. I hadn't thought of that, but it's probably there. And they're literally being peace, uh, connected to each other, seeing each other as peace builders. These are young people from Iraq, spelling out peace there, Iraq and Mexico. And the last slide I want to show you is uh, dreams and hope. And I think all of you have been laying out some of your dreams and hope. And they go back a long, a long way. These young Palestinian youth leaders are named Ahlam wa Amal, hope, dreams and hope. So. It's, they were so hopeful about Bernie, uh, actually. Uh, they were very excited. And the young people uh, on the other side, you'd say literally taking steps together. Some of them are undocumented from Chicago, and they're worried about the DREAM Act and, and uh, threats to that and what can happen to them. But you can see them here literally taking uh, steps forward together to become young peace builders, to transform conflict, to work for justice. And, I'm so moved to be part of this program here because I think we're taking big steps together to have big new ideas. So thank you everyone for being here.